Hello, we're back with part two, and let's just continue on. Uh, we don't have too much time to waste here. Hardware continued. An optical disc allows for mass storage, such as a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. A lot of computers aren't coming with these too much. Everything's moving to cloud computing, where your information is stored on another computer called a cloud. Um, but uh, these used to be used, these DVDs uh, were very useful for... You know, holding a game or or whatnot. Flash memory is known as a thumb drive, a USB drive that allows data to be held in a solid memory card about yay big. Printer allows for information to be put into a paper copy. Here's some more computer components. The motherboard is a circuit board that connects all the computer's components. It's a huge circuit board. Uh, maybe sometime next week I'll uh, we'll cut open a computer. That'd be kind of cool. Um, and it connects all the different components. If your motherboard gets fried, your computer is fried, too. All other functions on a computer are, are built through software. Now, this is where people get confused. Um, Microsoft Word is a software. It's not something that you um, attach to a computer. It's not something physical. It's, it's something that someone designed that someone typed in. It's coded to perform a certain task. And programmers do these tasks, they do the science of coding. So they sit there and they type out long strands of code in order for it to do something. Nothing about it like this. Um, of course my um, of course my cousin Dominic is a computer uh, programmer. I may have told you that before. Um, when he was learning programming, he was a junior in college. Uh, he was tasked to program a very simple game. It was, it was a game where you had um, tanks and you had to avoid an object that was coming at you. Move back and forth a tank. It was kind of like uh, if you ever played... Um, Tanks on the Wii Play. Well, I guess there's there's cheat. I guess there's uh, cheats for that. Um, and uh, let me see if there's an image here. Very similar to this. Man, this is a, this is a good game. A, a retro game here, where you have to hide and you know you can you can uh, shoot different people with tanks. Um, except it was all black and white. And even the tanks were, it was, just, it was just black. It looked like something out of the 1980s, Pong. Things didn't really move all that much. Motion was choppy. It took him like 40 hours to program that all by himself. And he got an A. Um, that's crazy to consider. Now imagine you want to program something like Minecraft. The hours, the thousands of hours worth of work that that takes. That's incredible. Fun fact about Minecraft. Minecraft, of course, was purchased from Notch by Microsoft. It took Microsoft two years of the, having one of their best teams on Minecraft to even understand what Notch wrote. Isn't that crazy? They had to read the code for two years and edit it to to make it understandable. They, they, they had to spend two years doing so. That's incredible. So computer programmers can write really however they want. I mean, imagine how many ways there is to say hello. You know, you got Guten Tag, you got, you know, what's up, you got so many different things. And everybody prefers something different. But they all kind of do the same thing. Well, that's that's a lot of what computer programmers do. Uh, t uh, uh, types of software. An operating system instructs um, how to communicate and work. So here is Mac OS. Uh, Mac OS is an operating system. Windows OS is a different operating system. Uh, and there are instructions on how to read and how to show um, what the computer is interpreting. There's also a third one, it's called Linux. I would encourage you to take a look at it. 
Uh, Linux is pretty cool. It's a free user-made operating system, the biggest one in the world, and um, it has a lot of different cool things. And you can run Linux right from any computer, whether it's Windows or Mac. And if your Windows or Mac isn't working, you can download Linux and then run Linux instead of Windows or Mac. An application is built to cater the specific needs of a user, like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or uh, Safari. If you want to get on the internet, you use Safari or Google Chrome. Or um, when I was when I was growing up, we had a browser called Opera. What in the world? Isn't that strange? You probably never heard of it. Um, internet Explorer, etc. I like this GIF. Watch it for me. My computer. <laughs> In the trash can. You ever uh you ever have grandparents that are um that are there, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this GIF so that you can't watch it the whole time. <laughs> you ever have grandparents that are completely computer illiterate? And just by like refreshing a browser, they look at you like you're some kind of Einstein. Or you change out the batteries in a remote and they think you're a computer wizard. Um, uh, well, my, my, uh, my grandparents are like that. They have no idea what's going on, you know. I think my computer has a virus. It's not turning on. I'm like, did you uh, unplug it? Oh, okay, you know. Um, but anyway, um, computers have languages they're built to read. Computer scientists speak these languages just like one would speak English, Spanish, or French. There's tons of different computer languages, and you literally have to learn them. Uh, but these languages have things in similar, kind of like um, I knew a guy who was from Brazil, and he spoke, of course, uh, Portuguese, and a guy from Mexico, I worked with both of them at Bob Jones, and uh, they'd speak to each other. They'd understand each other. I'd be like, well, that's that's kind of weird. You don't even speak the same language. But they, they knew enough of the other person's language that they could get by. Um, because languages are kind of similar. Uh, there are tons of different computer languages. Um, consider uh, some of them. Uh, Basic, C, C++, COBOL, Java, Fortran, you know, you have... You have all of these different programming languages. I mean, you can go to Wikipedia, and there's about half a zillion of them. Um, and, uh, wow, look at all these sources. Um, very cool. And, in fact, I had a roommate. Uh, his name was Dan. And Dan got a job um, making a whole lot of money. He's actually retired. Anyway. Um, he got a job making a whole lot of money, uh, and his job was to code in a language he didn't even know, but he knew enough of, uh, lots of different languages that he figured it out very quickly. It'd be like if you already spoke 10 languages, you'd be like, oh, what's 11? You know, I could <laughs> probably learn in a couple days, right? Um, and each of these languages is pretty useful. For instance, uh, Java runs in, in lots of different um, and lots of different things uh, that you might encounter in the world, whether we're talking about a, uh, like a McDonald's ordering screen, you know, where you go and select whatever you want to order, or, or your TV or whatnot. Um, you have certain ones like Python, which are very useful for video games. And it's a language. Sometimes the scientists um, make an error called garbage, Making uh, garbage in, garbage out, very popular phrase. Um, if you miss one period, one single period, or one comma, or mistype the word if by putting two Fs, ruins the whole code. So I remember sitting there in my dorm room with my cousin, and we're scanning through his code to see where he missed just one small issue. And if the program wasn't working, he'd search it all. And finally, he'd find, oh, I forgot to put a second bracket or something dumb. Because computers aren't smart. Like, if I mistype something, let's say I put uh, computer. Uh, I, f I forget to uh, 
Um, let's say I forget to put the the M. You're going to know what I mean. Computer. Um, but the computers are not going to know that. The computer's going to be like, oh, let's panic. I don't know what you're talking about. The compiler runs the code uh, to see whether or not it works or not. World Wide Web, of course, very familiar with, allows you to access the uh, internet. You're on the internet now, so uh, shouldn't be too hard. Uh, cloud computing allows you to store computer resources remotely, like on Dropbox. So I use Dropbox. It's a cloud computing. It's not like an actual cloud in space. It's a cloud like uh, it's on a server um, that hosts data for me. So I don't have enough room on my computer, so what I do is I give the information to another computer. And the server, like a Minecraft server, we already talked about Minecraft, serves other computers by hosting data. Um, so if you run your own server, you're hosting the data for all the other people joining your data or joining, joining your server. Robots are used to aid research and help around the world. They do tasks for us that we don't want to do or aren't as good at. Um, so there's a lot of robotics in like, uh, in like medicine right now. In fact, a lot of surgeries are just done by robots and not even done by humans because robots are so much better at it than we are. Uh, they don't really make mistakes. We get tired. We forget. Some people leave a scalpel in a person's body, you know. Robots don't do that. We can program them to just go, you know, and it's done. Um, supercomputers do tasks that normal computers can't do, like code breaking, simulations, weather forecasting. So, um, so let's take weather forecasting, for example. A supercomputer needs to run that because um, meteorologists can't just use a regular Windows computer to do that kind of stuff. Uh, there's such a massive amount of data that goes into weather forecasting. You know, pressures from from thousands of different machines and temperatures from thousands of different machines, compiling this data, sorting through the data. Um, this weather forecasting, you need, you need a huge computer to do that. And, and that's it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video lecture. Uh, do section review 16.3, page 401. And uh, you are done with chapter 16, at least the lecture portion of it. There's still more to come when we start coding. And uh, we have a couple different activities that we're going to do that are kind of cool, in my opinion. I hope you find them cool as well. I hope that you're interested in computers. Um, if, uh, if I weren't a teacher, say I couldn't become a teacher, I think I'd be a computer scientist. That's very, very cool. You can do stuff with computers that nobody else can. But it takes lots of work, a whole lot of work. And, um, well, anyways, I'll see you guys later.